Hey guys, this is James from Isotropic, and in this video I want to show you guys how I add custom post types to a WordPress website, what they are used for, uh, and kind of the process that I follow when installing them. So, a custom post type, uh, first let's go over why you would want them and what they are. So, this is a post type, a posts. Posts is a post type, and uh, it comes built into WordPress and it's just a collection of uh, database entries that can be displayed on the front end of the website, typically as a blog post. Um, for many websites, there is a need for another post type or another content type that falls outside of the realm of a blog post or a page. Um, and many times you can do this through a page, but if you're building a website for a client and you want uh, it to be easy to add additional content to the site instead of building out custom pages it might be a good idea to add a custom post type and then assign a template to that so all they need to do is populate the custom post type with content uh, and then the template will style it accordingly and I'll kind of show you this this will make a lot more sense as I go through the video but I'll show you exactly what I'm doing so a good example and what I'm going to do for this uh, website is add a custom post type called services. Uh, actually, no, this is a good example would be uh, a services custom post type. So you have your overarching services post type. Uh, it would show, this would be the URL. And this would be basically the archive of all of your services. And you could style it as a, as a normal page, but display all the services. Each individual service would be a service post. And under here, uh, you would have a, you'd add a new service. And then once you add that new service, you would have uh, a new service displayed on the services archive. Um, in this example, I'm going to, instead of do services, I'm going to do uh, resources. So the first thing to do is install this plugin, custom post types UI. And this is an admin UI for creating the custom post types. You can also create custom taxonomies. Um, and this can be done by using code snippets, except I just find this to be much easier. There's no performance issue. There's no security issue. Uh, it basically automates the task of putting together the code snippet and installing it in uh, your functions PHP. Or in my case, because I'm using Oxygen, I would need to use code snippets or something like that. So we're going to add a new post type and the slug is going to be, so this is what it's going to look like as our URL as an example. Resource and then it could be, uh, so this would be the slug resource and then photo checklist and then the photo checklist itself would be the individual post type. So. And you can see that I've done this before uh, and you can auto populate the fields. So this essentially helps you create a uh, snippet that is installed in your website and then registers a new post type, uh, which can then be used to display content. The one thing that I need to change here is has archive set that to true um, and then go ahead and uh, create the post type. You can add supports. For me, uh, there is nothing that I want to include other than the title, the Gutenberg content editor, and the featured image. And we're not going to support any taxonomies for now. We can add that in the future if the client needs it. So we've just added resources. Here's our custom post type. And I'm actually going to do one more thing and change our icon to maybe a book. I don't know if we have a book. But let's see. Or a library or something like that. We'll use this one. So I'm just going to change the menu icon. I like doing this. Uh, the default menu icon is the same as posts. So this just helps the client uh, specify. Oh, we need to edit the post type instead of make a new one. Uh, and this is also why I like using this plugin because uh, it offers the ability to easily go and edit the code snippet without having to go into the snippet itself. All right, so I've updated the resources. You can see here are our resources post type, and it looks exactly like the normal blog posts user interface because it's the same thing. It's just basically blog posts 
uh, classified differently under the website. So resources add new, no resources found. Uh, for now, I don't really know what resources we're going to be using. So what I'm going to do is quickly add a custom a custom uh, a placeholder not a custom a placeholder blog post just so I can populate the content within uh, find a free image on unsplash if you don't know about this this is a killer website this is a huge image for the site but I'm going to be deleting these posts as soon as I know what content I'm actually populating in there uh, here is there we go resource one uh, and here you can see kind of how it's working too anthology photo resource resource one and then I'll make the archive page uh, point to resources and um, so when you go to resources you'll have an archive of all of the um, custom posts and one thing to do here is if you're going to use a page as your archive page instead of assign properly a template uh, to the archive which is exactly what I'm going to do instead of uh, using actually let's take a look before I before I make any commitments here we are going to take a look at our archive page. I think that I can't change this slug to be resources, plural, for our archive page. Let me check. Oh, I can. So what I'm going to do, instead of making a page uh, that shows all of our resources, I'm going to add a template that applies to the resources archive. Um, I didn't know that that was possible, but I guess it is. And Adding a template that applies to the archive page of a custom post um, is a good idea. It's it's really a good idea if you're using a tool like Oxygen Builder. I think Elementor also has this functionality where you can apply templates from the front end and build them in a builder. Um, if you're using something else and it's easier for you to create a page, uh, what I've done in the past is create a resources page, keep the slug of the archive as the default which would be resource and then use the redirection plugin to redirect resource which is your archive page which wouldn't have any styling if you did it this way redirect it from the archive page to the standard page of resources so uh, slash resource would, would redirect to slash resources so here are our resources I'm adding uh, resource one and I'm going to set the featured image actually we already have images on the site so I'm just going to throw this in here um, and I'm going to publish you and I'm also going to go ahead and uh, I don't know if I have a duplication. I don't. I'm going to add a new one and name that resource too, just so I can build out my template. And, and at this point of the video, you should have a pretty good idea of why resource of why you would use a custom post type uh, and and the benefits that it has you can silo your content um, this is also helpful if you run like a normal uh, content website if you want to silo and, and make different slugs for different things so say you have a, a tutorial tutorials T -G -R -I -S. tutorials that would be a custom post type and then maybe you have a blog that would be the standard post type and then maybe you have um inspiration that would be another post type and the thing with siloing the content like this is it makes it easy to apply different styling to different types of content so maybe you want your tutorials post to look a little bit different than your uh standard standard uh blog post that's how you do it so I'm using oxygen so I'm going to add a new template that applies to our uh, we're first going to build out the um, the uh, I think I just we're going to build out the resources archive page first so what we're going to do is go to post types choose our custom post type which is registered under the site as resource um, apply the header and footer template uh, publish it 
and then hop into oxygen and this website was done pretty quickly so it doesn't follow the best practices unfortunately but i will show you in a moment how i'm going to just quickly build out this template and then i'm going to finish the video uh also i don't have any template and styling applied here so you can see that it just shows up as a as this it doesn't look too amazing but uh, as you can see your custom content gets pushed to the front end of the page uh, depending on the theme that you're using the, the builder that you're using how you've created your website it will be styled according to the rules that you have applied to it uh, and the content will display on the front end of the website so using custom post type I'm actually gonna wrap it up here uh, all I'm going to do here is just populate a repeater with the resources um, as the archive page which would show right here uh, but to wrap up the video using custom post types um, as opposed to categories or tags it allows you to silo your content if you have a completely different content type that you want to apply different content styling to um, especially in oxygen or something like elementor where you can visually build without needing to add uh, custom templates to the back end of your theme where you can visually build out templates siloing content like this is a really good idea it's also helpful if you want to create custom archive pages uh, the difference for me between categories and custom post types is the fact that a category should classify similar types of content. So say I run a blog, uh, everything would be classified as a blog post, but the, the categories would separate the blog posts into topics. Um, however, resources is a completely different type of post than a blog post, and it wouldn't be a good idea to use a resource category when you're using categories for something else so registering this as a new post type is helpful in the back end management of the content but it, all, it also makes it easy for you to um, apply templates and styling to it so hopefully that was kind of a video that helped you uh, if you don't know oh, we're getting deals uh, if, if you have any questions about custom post types um, feel free to reach out in the comments section below and I'll see you in the next video.